Hi guys, we are discussing the Arthashastra and in this video we will get into what does the Arthashastra imply? Is it a historical document? Is it a recommendation? Is it just a recommendation to say this, this if you do, do this it's best, it's an ideal or is it a sort of a constitution to be followed word for word? The picture of the ideal cotillion state that emerges from the above is one of a well-run state, prosperous and bustling with activity. There were shops with textile, textiles, gold and jewellery, and eating houses serving vegetarian and non-vegetarian food. Musicians, dancers, storytellers and reciters, clowns, acrobats and jugglers entertained the people. Men went to gambling places and drinking halls or visited brothels. Monks and nuns wandered freely. Some people were given special privileges. The king himself was obliged to grant audiences to deal with matters concerning the weaker sections. Local customs of different regions were preserved. A good conqueror adopted the dress, language and behavior of his newly conquered subjects. See how it's the opposite of Islamic invasions. On the other hand, there were some people automatically suspect, like ascetics and practitioners of the occult. There are two long lists of people who were to be arrested on suspicion in the city and on ferry crossings. The outcasts live both physically on the fringes of the inhabited areas and socially on the fringes of the Arya society. Everyone was suspected of having designs on the king and the kingdom. Secret agents were everywhere. But this picture is the ideal. The reality could have been very different. There were kings who impoverished their subjects, whose life could only have been one of unremitting drudgery. Kings imposed extra burdens on the people during calamities or for waging war. Dishonest officials cheated and robbed the people. Robbers and marauding jungle tribes harassed them. An unjust conqueror oppressed his newly conquered subjects. When reading this translation, it would therefore be wise to keep in mind that Cotillia was writing a textbook for kings and not a descriptive history of any particular state. And since those evil kings existed, which is why this book becomes even more significant because this is the, this is the alternative to that in, in saying, hey, don't do that, do this instead. 